Hello everyone, welcome for coming. My name is Kai Chen Chu. Uh, I'm going to present our recent work, Joint Modeling of Content and Discourse Relations in Dialogues. This is a joint work by Lu Wang, Joseph Kim, and me. So let's start from comics. Uh, as PhD students, us have experiences on long marathon meetings with our advisors or collaborators. So personally, I found it harder and harder to get engaged and stay focused as the meeting going on. Um, sometimes only after the meeting, I realized that there's, there is such discrepancy of understanding between me and my advisor, which is very sad. So to survive the PhD program, it is beneficial to find out a method which can, better under, can help us better understand and keep track of the important ideas of the meeting. Therefore, we formalize the problem by answering two research questions. How to pinpoint and extract important ideas from meetings? And using these important ideas, how to predict and model the meeting effectiveness? People have been done a lot in this area. In 1999, Jones formalized some rules on what makes up a good summary. And in recent years, content selection from meetings start to gain more attention in the NLP community. And specifically, people started to explore the benefits of using discourse to improve the content selection. And we can get more intuitions from this example of how the discourse and content interacts. Um, so we graph a conversation in tree structure. And here, each edge represents a discourse relation, which captures the discourse information of how two speaker terms logically connect. And for example, the elaboration is used when the child repeats the parent in other wordings. Um, so one of the interesting observations here is that um, all the important ideas are extracted around elaboration. So I highlight the important ideas in red. Um, it could be that it is very an idea is very likely to be important when it is repeatedly mentioned by speakers. So from this example, we see that the discourse and content are intertwined in the conversation. And it is promising to leverage discourse to improve the content selection. However, discourse parsing is still very challenging. And acquiring human annotation is very expensive. So to fill this gap, in this work, we propose a joint model to learn the interaction between discourse and content. When the discourse information is unavailable, we design a latent version of it. And use this framework, we can model and predict the meeting effectiveness. And let's see the methodology we use. This is a meeting snippet, including two speaker terms. Um, we structure it as follows. So first, we define discourse unit to be a continuous piece of speech uh, uttered by a speaker without, without being interrupted by others. So in the literature, people also study like dialogue act on sentence level, argumentative discourse um, unit on argument level. And we will focus on the later. Like we are more interested in the argument level. Um, to capture discourse information, between two discourse units, we model the discourse relation. Um, so for example, here the uncertain is the type of discourse relation which shows that the stance of child is unclear. And to model the salient content, we extract important ideas from discourse units on freeze level. We would like to produce these vectors such that each candidate phrase is represented by important or unimportant to indicate in the importance of it. And given above notations, we hope to model the conditional probability of important candidate phrase and discourse relation given the input discourse unit. And the, this framework is quite flexible. So many different kinds of methods can be used to solve it. And in this work, we employed a log linear model. It allows us to embed a rich feature site into it, so as to model the interaction between discourse and content. And the full formula can be further decomposed into three parts to capture content, discourse, and joint information separately. So for example, um, a sample content feature could be whether the height word of the phrase was mentioned in preceding term, and the sample discourse feature could be the similarity between two discourse units. To further build the interaction between discourse and content, we designed a joint feature by considering discourse feature and content feature. 
So for example, like a wider phrases are salient when an elaboration relation is surrounded by two sentences with high similarity. And given this log linear model, we would like to estimate the model parameters. So in this work, we employ a sample rank algorithm. It is a sampling based search algorithm which update the, the model parameters after each sample. And specifically, the algorithm construct a Markov chain to search better parameters at each iteration based on a task-specific loss function. And in 2016, Goya and Eisenstein show that it is promising to use this method in content selection task. And um, they extract important information from news articles on sentence level. And with the simple feature side, they didn't show very significant results on modeling the interaction between discourse and content. This is what we will focus on. And because sample run is a very generic framework, let me show how we adopt it in this work. So this is the meeting snippet with ground truth labels. Um, I highlight the important phrases in dark right. So the first, the algorithm randomly initializes the labels of discourse and content. Um, so we see that here the hand dynamo and the kinetic one are labeled as important. And the discourse relation is sampled as elaboration. And after that, at each iteration, the algorithm first resampled the discourse and content labels. This is, um, this is a sampling result of an iteration. Um, we refer the samples from the last, the last iteration as old samples, and the new sampling result as new samples. Um, then the algorithm decides whether to accept the new samples or not. So scoring function is used to compare old samples and new samples. If the score of the new samples is higher, then we accept this sampling. This is where the supervision helps Markov chain to search better samples. And finally, the algorithm updates the parameters based on these new and old samples. This is where the supervision drives the entire learning process and learn better parameters. Um, so after getting the model parameters, we infer discourse and content iteratively based on dynamic programming and integer linear programming. Um, so this is the basic idea how the training and inference in the joint model. Uh, when the discourse label is unavailable, we design a latent version of the model by marginalizing out the discourse relation labels. And to adapt the training algorithm, the only change we need to make is like, when we compute the scoring function, we don't consider any information from this course. Because in this latent version, we only have supervision on one side, the content. Um, so because our model can learn the interaction between this course and content, so the content supervision is able to drive the entire learning process. And to evaluate our model, we collected meeting corpora from two sources the AMI meetings and AXI meetings. And specifically, we collected the discourse relation labels based on this 20 argumentation schema. So this kind of um, argumentative discourse relation is very similar to the regular one, but focused more on the argument. And because uh, using our model, we can label the informativeness of the phrase, and we can also predict the discourse labels. So we evaluate our model on two tasks. One is the extractive summarization, and the other is discourse parsing. <laughs> so for the summarization task, we consider three baselines and one state-of-the-art method, which is proposed by Liu et al. in 2016. And we present root scores here. So root is computed based on n-gram overlap between the ge uh, system generated summary and the ground truth summary. Um, from the table, we see that our models can perform the best, the joint model can significantly improve the state-of-the-art method without adding too much length to the summary. And meanwhile, we found that the latent version of the model also performed very well. However, they add more words into the summary. And for the discourse parsing task, we consider a predefined discourse relation set, also based on the 20 argumentation schema. So here are the results of two baselines. And in condition, we also consider a state-of-the-art method proposed by G et al. in 2016. And by showing that our model can both outperform on accuracy and F1, so we believe that content can 
facilitate with the understanding of the discourse. At last, to further apply our model on real world tasks, we model the meeting effectiveness by introducing a consistency of understanding task. This task is first studied by Kim et al. in 2016. So they compare the participant summaries to determine whether participants share common understanding of the group decision. So to label the data, the meeting is labeled as consistent if people, if people finish the meeting with the common understanding. So when they report the same, time, the same type of the decision, the meeting is labeled as consistent. Otherwise, if people go over the meeting with different understandings, the meeting is labeled with inconsistent. Um, so to model this task, we design three features based on our proposed model. So first, we train two models based on um, meetings with consistent understanding and meetings with inconsistent understanding. Um, given a new input meeting, these two models can output two probabilities. This is the consistency probability meeting, uh, feature. Uh, second, so based on previous study, the discourse plays a very important role in learning shared understanding. For example, um, positive and negative responses show that um, the respondent is clear of what is happening and thus give some feedback on it. However, if we see that request and specialization, it refers to information request. It means that the speakers are not very clear what is discussing and they want more information. So we use, we use unigram and bigram discourse relations as the second feature. And third, um, the third um, we also leverage word entrainment, which is proposed by Nankua et al. in 2008. So they show that people tend to use similar words um, in um, expressing the important ideas as the meeting going on. So we measure this phenomenon by, compu um, by computing the lexical word entrainment score. And for comparison, we show a baseline and a state-of-the-art method from the original paper. Um, they only consider discourse and head gesture features, which is different from our model. We only design linguistic features as above. Um, we also show oracles here. So oracle is got um, by the ground truth labels. So basically, we want to show what is the gap between our model with the best we can achieve with ground truth. So from the table, we see that our model can get comparable results compared with the oracles and significantly improve the state-of-the-art method. So in conclusion, uh, by modeling the interaction between discourse and content, we achieve good performance on summarization and discourse parsing tasks. And also using the outputs of our model, we can model the in, uh, meeting effectiveness by introducing the consistency understanding task and our approach outperformed the state-of-the-art method. Um, so in the future, we would like to further explore what contributes to the importance of an idea. And to further understand the interaction between idea and the content, we are also interested in how discourse work in idea generation and idea flow processes. And we believe these two topics will lead to very interesting discussions. And we post the, we publish the code and data in the project website. If there's any problem, please contact me um, via email. And finally, hope all of us have good conversation with others. Thanks for listening and, uh, and questions. Um, any questions? We have time for a few questions. And if you have questions, please come to the microphone. So I have a question regarding the, you mentioned that you use uh, content specific features, discourse specific features, as well as content and discourse. Can you elaborate a bit more about what type of the content and discourse features, and if you think which one do you think will help best in your models? Uh, oh. Yeah, that's a good question. And um, I guess. I guess the joint, uh, I show some samples here, and I guess the joint features perform the best because um, I guess the, 
the most uh, joint, for, joint features is the most powerful because it can learn the interaction between discourse and content. Uh, this is what we focus on in this work. Um, actually, by observing the feature ways, we see most of important features are joint features. And then can you just give us example? You give here some example uh, yeah, of like the this, discourse. Like this um, example of joint features. Like we consider both the free uh, discourse feature and the content feature, and we combine it combine as the joint feature here. OK. Yeah. Any other questions? And then, um, um, so you show some results that were improving your joint model on detecting um, discourse relations. Did you do any experiment to try to see how it improved detecting important ideas in discourse? Like the content The selection. content piece, yes. Uh, yeah, so here we, um, so we show the summarization result here, like, uh, yeah. So we want to use the summarization task to see whether our um, the result of content detection makes sense. Also, we also have the uh, result of the like we also show the uh, we also have result on accuracy and F1 of uh, the content selection. Um, so we didn't put it here, but you can check out the paper. Actually, our model can also outperform the state of the art method. And uh, yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thanks.